in the book of Proverbs, I believe, it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he won't depart, she won't depart from it. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, I think 5 and 6 says, uh, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path to trust in the Lord. And so he makes a request. Prayer is communicating with God. Whether you're communicating with God face to face or you're communicating with God and it's almost like a monologue, that's prayer. And when God sends an a angel to speak to you, um, it's still a form of communication, which I would call a type of prayer. It's a type of communication, but not necessarily a monologue. So, Sally, when he is stressing his views on prayer, it comes from a very personal, long history of not listening to God and doing things his way. A story I'm way too familiar with myself. Many of you can relate to this. And when you finally come to your senses, like the prodigal son, you get on your knees and you ask, Lord, okay, so what's the direction? What do you want me to do? Manoah, here's what the wife says, but still makes the request. God hears his response and sends the messenger again to deliver the same message. Something that we can see from God way back as Genesis chapter 2 Genesis chapter 1 Genesis chapter 2 God loves to interact with humanity this interaction of talking directly through his messengers is something he wants to do as a matter of fact I think he prefers this is my opinion to speak to you directly but for whatever reason he may elect to send a prophet send a messenger send an angel allow his written word to speak to you directly i just believe that there is something to be said about the many times that we have seen god show up in someone's life to verbally speak to them ah the burning bush when Adam and Eve sinned, Adam, where art thou? I, I want to leave with these thought, with these thoughts. Manoah and his wife got the instructions. They worked together. They did all that they were supposed to do. Yet Samson chose not to listen. Mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, if your child chooses not to listen, that has nothing to do with the instructions. The question is, did you train up your child in the way they should go? Did you follow the instructions that the Almighty God provided for you to give? After that, it comes back to square one. We pray for our children on a daily basis, on a nightly basis, that the Almighty God orders their steps. That the Almighty God orders their steps. We pray for our home. We pray for our home finances. That the Lord God will make us prudent and wise stewards of his time. Those are the things that we pray for. Sally, in his interview, stressed how it was such a better day for him because he and his wife prayed together. And it's something that they do not fail to do every day before he goes to work. And he said he cannot stress the benefits of prayer. It keeps, it's the glue to the family. It's the connection to God. So I'm not going to deliberate this no more. You guys understand what I mean. 
you guys are going through it. If you're 18, maybe you're dealing with things on the internet. If you're in your 30s, maybe you just got married or you're just not married yet or finally found somebody that you might be serious about. If you're in your 40s and your 50s, you're checking to see, hey, have I accomplished the task that I wanted to accomplish over the course of my time? If you're in your 60s and your 70s, you're looking at, what have I done? You're evaluating yourself. God wants to be in a part of every aspect of your living. As long as you have breath, you're required to praise the Lord. As long as you have breath, you're required to stay in communication with Him and to pray to Him every morning and night. It doesn't stop because you're 90 years old and your bones hurt a little bit. All it means is that you have an opportunity to stand up and pray, lie down and pray. The position of prayer does not mean that you have to be prostrate. It's communicating with God. Whether that's in traffic and you're talking to him about the person that just cut you off and how much you want to really curse them out. God wants to be part of every aspect of you. You know how some of you go to the bathroom and you know you weren't supposed to eat what you ate and now you're either vomiting or you can't pass it and you say, oh God, that's short little oh God, that's a prayer. You're in pain. He wants to be involved in every aspect of your life. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's what I got from Solomon's uh, interview. Solomon's interview was, he was talking about his life and the importance of prayer. Throughout the book of Daniel, Daniel was a man of prayer. He knew from whence cometh his help. I hope that you guys have that same experience, that same understanding, and you stick with God. We are living in the end times or the last days or the edges of eternity. And we can see, if you're paying attention, signs of the time. You can see the new world order coming in together. You can see where how you know you will not be able to buy nor sell to get a house right now is ridiculously high but my god shall supply all your needs all your needs not some of your needs all your needs be anxious for nothing but everything through prayer and supplication right that's what the word says let your requests be known prayer works Prayer soothes. Prayer brings you back in understanding of who you are and whose you are. Enjoy the Sabbath day. It's a day of rest. Far from our care. Then it says, then may we enter pearly gates eternal and sing redemption song each Sabbath day. Shabbat Shalom for the Sabbath day. Pray without ceasing. And now may the God that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good way to do his will, working you that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You have listened to The Signalman. I'm your host, Daniel Signalman. Until next time.